back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at extensions in Swift, how you can use them, as well as doing a bunch of examples to see how we can use them practically in real applications. So first and foremost, as always, let's get started with Xcode. We're going to first start in a playground, and then we're also going to do a project to see uh, two examples, one in a playground environment and one in a real type of application. So let's create a new playground. We're going to stick with a blank playground in this case. And let's call it which, whatever we want. And while we're creating this, make sure to hit that like button below for daily Swift tutorials. Let's expand this window. And like so. And up here, let's uh, let's import Let's import, I believe it's called playground support. Great. So an extension, as the name implies, is a mechanism in Swift to extend the functionality of a class or a protocol. So what we're going to do for this example in the playground is create a class and show that we can extend its functionality. So let's create a simple class and let's call it car. And this car is going to have two properties. It's going to be a make, which is a string, and a model, which is also a string. Let's add an initializer for it, which is going to take a string and a model. And in here, we're going to say self.model is model, and self.make is make. And hopefully, we don't have any errors so far, as we don't, as we shouldn't. So let's come down here and create an instance of this car. So we're going to say let BMW equals a car. And it's going to take a make and a model. So we're going to say make is a BMW. And the model is a, let's say, 3 series. Let's add two functions in this car class. And those are going to be func drive. And we're also going to add func stop. And down here, of course, on the BMW, we should be able to say something like BMW dot drive, BMW dot stop. Okay, let's add some extensions. So to add an extension, you simply type in extension and the thing you want to add an extension to. So in this case is car class of so car. Cool. So let's say we want to add another function on this car class. We can say func open doors. Now on our BMW, we can say BMW dot open doors. And it should highlight it in just a second. Sometimes playgrounds decide to do some funny things. Let's see. That's probably because we put a comma here and we want a period. Perfect. So we see now we have these three functions, stop, drive, and this open doors down here. This function in the extension is treated almost identically, actually completely identically in this case, uh, compared to if you put the function, let's say instead of here, if you threw this in here. So that begs the question of why the heck would you ever want to use an extension? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One reason that extensions are popular is to visually separate your code into logical groupings. So oftentimes, uh, in the view controller or in a big file, you might have different parts of the file that have, let's say, like uh, user interface code and then logical code and let's say some calculation code. And you might, want, you might want to use extensions to divide it up. The other reason you might want to use an extension is you might have declared this car class somewhere in your project. And let's say now you're like 30 files in deep and you are running into a situation where you think, well, maybe I should have added this additional class or additional function on this class uh, to do this thing that I now need to do. So let me add an extension to extend its functionality. Now, the question there is, could you go back to the class and add the function there? Absolutely. But the reason people will often pick an extension for that situation is because let's say the using code is in a different file. You can put the extension right in that file. And the next time a different engineer goes to take a look at some functionality in there, 
they can see the pertinent relevant stuff that extend the car class can do in the extension right below its usage site. Um, and a couple other things to point out is in an extension, we cannot have properties. So what I mean by that is if I put in here var, um, let's say foo equals one, two, three, we'll see an error pop up in just a second that extensions cannot have properties. So extensions are great for, um, extensions are great for functions, for classes, but not for properties. And you, we can also extend protocols. That's another important thing to understand. So let's actually get rid of all of this stuff and show a quick protocol example before we jump into a real app to show the final usage uh, of extensions. So if we have a protocol up here, well, actually, let's get let's let's bring this stuff back. So let's uh let's get rid of this and let's add a protocol up here and let's call it um let's say car delegate and let's say in this protocol we have one function which is gonna be car did star driving whoops and that's all we need we don't need any implementation in here and let's see I think we need the braces at the end yep we need the sorry we need the uh, parentheses at the end of this but no implementation block another common use of extensions is instead of conforming to your protocol by doing colon and this in front of the class and adding the function in here, which is this is driving. What people can often do, or rather, rather what people often do in fact do to make it easier to read and cleaner, is we could add this protocol conformance through an extension. So what we can do is we can say extension car that and move the actual stuff from our protocol into this block. So if we look at this, it's more of a clearer divide of this is the core class functionality up here. And down here, we have the conformance to this uh, car delegate protocol that we've defined up here. Another, another thing people will often do is come up here and add a comment, just kind of defining that what you have below here is the car delegate, but that's just a styling practice that has nothing to do with extensions, but I just wanted to call that out. But yeah, so we can extend uh, classes in that way. And last but not least, we're going to actually extend this car delegate protocol. And what you can actually do by extending a um, protocol is you can offer a default implementation for the function that the protocol provides. So what that means is any class that conforms to this protocol, it needs to implement the function that is in here, right? Or the functions, plural, that are in here. If it doesn't, it can also defer to default implementations. So in this case, we can do something like print hello world. And you can extend the protocol to provide this deep default imp implementation for the function. Now, I will say this isn't that common in several projects, but I have seen it uh, across kind of industry in the past like four or five years. So it definitely does come up very infrequently, but good to know nonetheless. So let's close up this playground and let's create a real Xcode project. And I'll show you a realistic way that people use extensions. So we are going to create a table view project, save it on our desktop. And we're not going to actually implement the whole table view, but let's hop into our view controller. Let's hypothetically imagine we were implementing a table view. Let's just do the code part and not the interface builder part. So we have this table view and of course we're going to want to set its delegate and data source. So what I will often do and what most people often will do is instead of adding the UI table view delegate and data source conformance in this line, and the way you would do that is putting a comma here, UI table view delegate 
and so on for the data source, what you can actually do is add an extension to this class. And you can say UI table view delegate. And you can write another extension to this class. And you can say UI table view data source. And this is actually going to complain because the data source has two required functions. So let's quickly implement them so we can build. First one, we're just going to return this. Bear with me one second. But now you can see that the errors from up here went away because we actually do in fact have the view controller class conforming to UI table view delegate and data source. And by doing it separately, this conformance in extensions, we can see that we've cleaned up our core class code up here quite a bit. It's not to say we have less code, it's just more logically divided. Um, another thing to keep in mind, which uh, I guess by doing this should be clear now, is extensions reside outside of a class. You do not put extensions inside of a class. They need to go outside of the curly braces, and the order of extensions don't matter. What I mean by that is you can see up here that we're saying the table views delegate and data source itself, but the actual extension that has the colon and the name of the interface, the protocol, is below it. Swift is smart enough to look around to find any conformance or any other uh, code that you might have before yelling about an error. So yeah, that about does it for extensions. Uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment below. I know I go through these videos kind of fast sometimes, so don't hesitate to ask. If you're new, subscribe. I do daily Swift tutorials, other iOS app development stuff, and other tech stuff along the way that kind of comes to mind. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.